Okay, so we've gone from doing two videos a week to pretty much two videos a month. And people have been saying, where's he gone? What's happened to Kirk? Where is he? So let me explain to you quickly. I started one job, which ended up escalating into a massive job. And I was there for too long, but we got the job done. That's sort of finished now, and we're on to the next job. Now, we've started an external wall insulation job. And I want to show you how I do external wall insulation and the acrylic render and all that sort of stuff. But at the minute, we're just sort of getting the job off the ground. We're sorting out, you know, um, how we're going to at attach the, the render boards and the insulation, all the different aspects of the job. Um, at the moment, we're not really getting into doing any plastering. We're just getting the job ready. But I thought I'd just take you through the little, uh, the little process, the things that are happening, you know, the little issues that we come up against so this job now that i'm going to show you i'm going to show you the first couple of days of just getting the job off the ground the scaffolding going up and um, basically getting the job ready for the insulations being installed now there's issues with we've been sent out base rails that are all bent up we've got base coat missing off of the order um these are just some of the things that come up in life it's just how jobs go sometimes um, we've also got um the acrylic itself has come out the acrylic render and the primer and the color that you actually see on the color chart online and the color that's actually turned up although they're the same you know the same code they're completely different so we're gonna have a, a little switchy maroon with swapping colors around but anyway let's just get into the video and at the end of the video i'll explain everything i've done and why i've done it Wrote down the price of these uh, boards here somewhere. Where did I write it? Uh, 18 sheets, 628. That's MKM, put it go to MKM, 600. The missus always blocks me in. She always does this to me. You've got the turning circle of a jumbo jet on. First time, you reckon? Every time. <laughs> Toyota power. Right, let's go to this little timber yard around here. We'll see what price these can do as plywood for. So we've, got a, we've got 630 quid from MKM. So we'll see if these boys can beat it by much and save us driving all the way to Chester. Like. You know, um, I'm going to do my little, uh, my little technique, my little purchases technique on him. What's that? <laughs> right. I'm going to go off and say to him, right, what's the price? Tell him what he wants, ask him for the price. And then when he gives you the price, you say to him, all right, is that sort of um, is that like the best price you can do? And then whatever he says then, you just don't reply. You just stand there quiet and just leave him an awkward silence. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then usually they come out with better prices, <laughs> but they don't like it. They don't like that one bit. So you got one shot at this because after we've done this, the same fella won't like me again after it because it just makes the whole situation awkward. But you get the best deal out of them that way. Happy days. We got the exterior ply for the steel, so I'm a happy man. Let's get back to the job and get started. Different high. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> when you touch me. <laughs> this is what I have to put up with when Kieran hasn't had his medication. Show him around there, can you? Take a little walk around. Go away for some scaffolding on you there. 
Yeah, the scaffolding is getting put up and then that'll be complete. And the back looks a little something like this. Here's an interesting thing. We're going to put exterior wall insulation on this house. It's a concrete house built just after the war. Um, metal framed, concrete bottom. Now the council have done loads of them like this and they've used brick slips on the bottom. Now what's interesting is, when the council did it, they took it all off. They took all the uh, this, this metal off and then the screwed cement board, render carrier board, to the metal frame that was behind. Now the interesting thing is, when you actually speak to the lads that did that job, they were telling me it's an absolute nightmare because there's hardly anything to fix to. And they were showing me massive sections where the cement boards basically, if I can show you, there's, there's, there's basically four foot gaps between where you've got to fit to. Now, when you phone up and you want to get someone to give you a sort of a spec, you know, you're asking for a specification on what to do with this. No one wants to commit. No one wants to give you a spec because they don't want to be held accountable if there's any issues because these aren't of traditional build houses. So they can't say, yeah, just do this and this and this. You know, you, you phone them up and they tell you someone's going to get back to you and you wait for weeks and weeks and weeks and nothing, you know, you keep phoning them. Um, no one really wants to give you the specification. A written one anyway. So, after speaking to plenty of lads that have done these in the past, I just decided the best thing for me to do was to leave the metal in. We're still screwing into the framework, we're still hitting the metal framework with longer screws, but in the centres, in the centre section where there's literally there's no framework, once we cover it with plywood and I screw it to this cladding as well, it makes it solid. And the other thing is, I didn't want to use cement board because when you come to put your insulation on top of it, you're not getting the best fixing to a cement board. When you put your, your plugs through your knockings, they're going to knock in to cement board, but it's only that thick, so you're not getting the best fixing. And you're sort of relying on the adhesive to hold it as well. Now, we will use adhesive. I'll probably use foam to stick these insulation panels to this, but as well as that, we'll have washers with wood screws that will screw into this and probably into that. So this will be fixed a lot better with a lot less work involved in taking all this off. I think the only benefit in taking this off is you can go and weigh it in. But ultimately, for the best job, I think this is the best way of doing it. And seeing as how no company will give me a written sort of guarantee and a specification, I'm guaranteeing this myself because I've done it. I think this is the best way of doing these. So for anyone out there, this is why I'm doing it this way. That's about as far as we're going to get today. We need the scaffold and adjust them up the side there. We need more scaffolding to go higher. Uh, a bit of an awkward place because it's over like a little outhouse. And then um, 
yeah, tomorrow we can start putting insulation panels on when they get delivered. Day two. Insulation has arrived. We're a few bits short, but they're coming in the next day or so. We've got enough to get started, don't we? We can start getting this insulated. Fixings, washers for going up the timber. Just need to get some wood screws for that. Mesh. More fixings, more washers, and then. Now, what's interesting is, I don't think they've sent us a primer. I don't think we've got a primer. One twenty, one twenty, one twenty, one twenty. Oh. That's all we've got is so basically these walls I've got a little bell cast on them so what I've done was I got smaller base mail and then I chamfered off the bottom of the insulation so it fit flat when they cancelled all the other ones they just bent the insulation which looked I think looked a bit naff I wanted it to sit straight so um put a small I've got a, a 60 mil base rail on and a 90 mil insulation and chamfered the back of the insulation so they fit on flat and then another thing come come back over here you should see the See what they did? They put like borders, come round here so you can see, put borders around the windows on the, on the houses that they've done. But we didn't really want to do that, so what we've been doing is, that's because there's metal profile that's part of the structure. So we've been notching it out instead. I'm notching it out. I can get metal fixings into this, we can screw into this with metal fixings, but we don't want to lose all the margin on the window. So I'm going to put cement board inside here, and cement board on here. We'll put over sills on. Now, other stuff that you've missed, you didn't see us do. This is all painted lovely and white. Kevin's gone round with some uh, exterior pre grit and gritted all the outside of the house. So we're, we're fixing these with, with mechanical fixings, but we're also putting adhesive all over the back of these insulation panels. So they're getting adhesive and fixings, and we've gritted it so that it sticks well. And then we're going to notch out around these. It's not the easiest thing to do, so any little discrepancies, we'll fill that with foam. Like that. And then we can cut those off um, to suit when the sills come. We can put cement board, we can screw into this, we can foam underneath it and make it all solid. And we'll make something nice around the windows, make them a nice shape. Um, but that's where we're up to, so come around here, mate. This is what we can do up to now. We've started building up. But we did have a little issue. Look at this. Now, this wasn't the supplier, but the courier, when he sends all these out, look at the shape of these. You see that? 
<laughs> they're all, all of them. They're all bent and kinked and twisted. Yeah, every single one of them. That's what happens when you send things in transit. So, fortunately the thinner ones, the 60mm ones that we've used at the bottom, they were all straight, so we, we've been able to use them. But there's going to be a break in the wall where it steps out, and that's where we need the 90mm, but we can't use them now. So we've got to wait now for them. So we're going to do what we can, go up as high as we can, and then that'll be us then until until the these come out on Tuesday, because it's the bank holiday weekend. So that's what we've been doing, and that's where we're up to. It's not that exciting. I try and get all plastic and stuff, but uh, it's just what we've been up to lately. That's it. So these little bits here, these are the, rather than just cutting a piece to go in there like that, we're having to notch the back of them out. Which typically, typically, nothing ever goes straight forward. It just that just doesn't quite reach far enough, so a little bit stays stuck on. And then we have to clean it up, so, you know, it takes like five times as long, but that's life, isn't it? Nothing ever works out just how you want it. So this, uh, this adhesive that VPI make, by the way, is probably the flipping stickiest stuff I've ever encountered in my life. Um, just a little word of warning for you. Show them the bag. That stuff, yeah, uh, rear mix mono. Has he shown you that? Is it? <clears throat> this gear, if you leave this on your tools for more than 20 minutes, forget it, your tools are ruined. It sticks to your handboard. The last job we did like this, I had a build up on my handboard about half an inch thick, right? And you'd think you could just bend the aluminium handboard and it'd come off. Oh no, <laughs> it was stuck on forever. I've actually kept it as a, like a little, um, Ornament. A sample piece that I can show customers how good this stuff is because once it's stuck, it never comes off. It doesn't even come off your handboard. I've been belting it with hammers, everything stuck. So, I mean, if it sticks to that that well, you can imagine how well it sticks to this, can't you? I think, uh, think everyone will enjoy having Kieran back on the camera mm. rather than Sam. It's a flipping nightmare, wasn't it? <laughs> it's heavy breathing. Whenever you get those phone calls in the middle of the night, it's Sam that does it. Some fellas put the back of these on with like a, a notched tile trowel. Um, but I, I don't know, I, I think sometimes that they're not thick enough, so I like to sort of know that they've definitely touched the wall and made contact. So I just do these like this. Don't forget as well, it's going to have six fixings in it, so I mean, it ain't going to go anywhere. Mate. 
you filming? Yeah. Yeah, come here. See these, right? The, I used to always buy like DeWalt and Makita, right? See these? They're like 70 quid from Screwfix. Yeah, um, I've got like three of them. Me, Makita ones all got pinched, you know, when, the, uh, when they come in the night and go in your van for you and take them. So I thought, sod that, I'm not getting these robbed all the time. So I started buying these, and they're better. These are better than Makita ones, I'm not even kidding you. And as well, because they're sort of like only 70 quid rather than 600 quid, you can afford to buy a few of them. So when you're chopping renders off, you can have, you know, everyone can have one rather than just one of you. Right, if you're watching this video because you're doing an external wall installation on a similar type of property, then I'm going to quickly explain now what I've done and why I've done it. So, first off, if you've just got a standard house built from bricks, then you can go to a render supplier, an external wall installation supplier, and get a written specification off them and just follow the spec to the T. Dead easy. You can't go wrong. Just do what they say on the, on the instructions. If you're in a different situation, like me, yeah. and you're working on a house that is not of traditional build. It's like a prefab house. You probably find you'll end up in a similar situations where we are, where no one really wants to give you the written spec, because if things go wrong because it's not a traditional build, no one wants to be held accountable. No one wants to sort of say, well, yeah, we wrote the spec, and it's all gone wrong, so we're accountable. So you end up in a situation where everyone sort of fobs you off. No one wants to tell you the best way of doing it. So I'm going to tell you what I've done to help you so that maybe you can have an idea of how to do your job if you're in a similar situation to me. First off, let's do all the bottom of the house. The bottom of the house is preformed concrete. The preformed concrete has got a bell cast formed into it. Okay? It's already got a bell cast made into the concrete. So you can't chop it off because it's actually part of the wall. It's part of the concrete slab. <clears throat> so what I've done is, on the other houses that the council contractors did, they used 90 mil insulation and put a 90 mil base rail on the bottom of the bell cast that stuck out. And then when they've put the bottom row of insulation in, they've had to bend 90 mil insulation to sort of fix it in and there's gaps behind it and it's not the best job. And then they've used brick slips. We're not gonna use brick slips, but anyway, Apart from that, they've had to try and bend the insulation. 90 mil insulation doesn't like to be bent. So what I've done is, I've measured the bell cast. The bell cast that's formed in the concrete is 30 mil. I've used 60 mil base rails, and I've shaved off 30 mil off the back of the insulation. So it fits snug, it fits over the bell cast, and the, the front of the insulation is a nice straight finish, how it's meant to look. A little bit more work, but I think it's worth it. So that's how I got around that. The second thing, rather than just fixing it with the knocking washers, I've also put adhesive on the back of every panel of adhesive. Every panel of insulation, I've put adhesive on the back of it. So it's not only just got mechanical fixings, it's also got adhesive. And, as an extra step again, because it's all been painted, rather than just relying on the adhesive, which sticks like shit to a blanket to absolutely everything. It'll wreck your tools if you leave it. Trust me, if you leave it on your handboard and trowel, they'll be ruined because it literally picks up in about half an hour and it cannot, it will not come off. It's horrendous stuff. But to help it even more, we put a pre-grit on the concrete. So that's the bottom half dealt with. We know that's bomb proof now. The top half of the house, here's the thing. The top half is a metal frame. Now, the metal frame has got metal cladding screwed over the top of it. And where the cladding is screwed, they're at four foot intersections. Now, when the council contractors took off the rest of the street, they took the metal cladding off and they just had the framework to fit to. And it's at four foot gaps. And they used um, 12 mil cement board. Now, I don't like the idea of there being a four foot gap with nothing behind it because four foot's a good old distance and if that cement board was ever banged into too hard it could potentially snap. So my thinking was I'm going to leave the metal cladding behind as an extra bit of strength. I also decided to not use cement board. Instead I've used exterior ply 
12 mil. Same thickness, but it's lighter. It's lighter than weight, so I'm not adding all the weight to the top of the building. That's one of the reasons why. The second reason why is because if you use cement board, I've got to use the knock-ins, and they work like a um, raw plug, yeah? But you're only going to 12 mil. You're not getting the full strength of the raw plug, the whole length of it. You're only getting 12 mil of it where it's actually in the board, if that makes sense. It's like that, you know? It's only as strong as that thin bit in the board. So I decided to use plywood because then you're getting a wood screw screwed into the timber and it'll go a little bit further and screw into the metal cladding. I think that's a lot better fixing rather than just a raw plug in a cement board with a four foot gap between the fixings. So that's why I've used exterior ply. Once, once it's all insulated, that exterior ply can never get wet either. It's going to be inside the wall. There's going to be insulation and then acrylic render on the front of it. So I'm not worried about it ever getting wet. But even, even still, just in case there is any moisture in the meantime, I've used exterior ply rather than just standard plywood. Now, the only... The only downside, I believe, to using ply, but I weighed up what was pros and cons, is I don't just fix it with mechanical fixings. I also use adhesive on the back of the insulation. The adhesive doesn't stick as well to ply as it does to cement board. That's the only downside. It does stick, but I don't think it sticks as well. So what I'm going to do is, what I've done on other ones, instead of using adhesive on the back of the insulation, I'm going to use expanding foam. I'm going to foam the back of each panel, glue it to the plywood, and then I'm going to put six mechanical fixings in. Now, I've actually tested this in the past. I've got plywood, put it on the floor. I've glued with expanding foam some insulation, and I've also adhesived some insulation. I'm done a pull test, and the foam works better. So I know the foam's fine. So that's where I'm up to up to now. And that's why I've done everything I've done up to now. Oh, another little point as well. One last little bit for you as well. The bottom half of the house is concrete. The top half is a metal frame. Just in case there's any expansion and contraction. All the rest of the houses in the street have been done straight through. Not a problem. But just to be a little bit extra sure. Cost a little bit more money. But I'm putting a break in the render. So I've gone the bottom half concrete and put another base rail and stepping out a little bit and then going again. Now, if there's any expansion in the metal, then it's separate from the bottom half. It's on another base rail and it could potentially move. It won't. It'll only be a fraction, but there's, there's no chance of a crack at that intersection because I've put a separate base rail. So there's, a, there's almost like an expansion gap between the top and the bottom of the house. All right, guys, hope that's helped you. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sorry it's not just a whole plastering video and we're talking about stuff that you probably won't ever come up against. But if you're watching this video just for this purpose, hope that explains to you why I've done what I've done and give you a little bit of insight into it and help you on your job. All right, guys, cheers. Take it easy.